the Iranian regime that what they're doing scares the shit out of me. Yeah, it's really scary. They just tortured and murdered a karate champion and for protesting and yeah, rappers disappeared now. Yeah. I mean, they really don't care. They've they've killed. Depends on the estimates you read, but you know, 450, 500 people on the street during protests. Much less all the people who have just disappeared, right? and they're sitting held in prison somewhere. So, but everyone over here is so distracted by Ukraine and Russia that we we rarely talk about Iran. Well, yeah, we that's yeah, that's a great point. We um, we're very sort of singular in our attention, right? Yeah. And so it's like again, we can't multitask. So we should be worried about Iran. We should be. I mean, really, where are the big flashpoints? Russia, Ukraine, obviously, is one. Iran. Because what, what's going to happen if Iran, here's a thought, right? If you, if you think about the breakout potential for Iran to develop a, a, a nuke, right, a weapon, um, some estimates now are, are it, about a week, one week, right, to develop enough uh, enriched uranium. You've got to uh, enrich- a, a week from right now? If they, yeah, they're basically saying, look, if they make that decision, they need what, 20 25 kilograms of enriched uranium at like 90 percent. That's that's weapons grade. So they could do that within a week. Is is uh, a number of estimates, legitimate estimates. They could. Do, and that's for one. You know. And okay. So you know, is there value in that? Well, from their perspective, perhaps they could do three weapons in maybe a month's time. So that breakout that we used to talk about in terms of you know year years, um, at least at least many months now is is shrunk. Right. And so the idea is, as a flashpoint, people say, well, why should we still be worried about Iran? Well, because, you know, there's a, a, a high likelihood that if the Israelis get, you know, the sense that that's where they're heading, that they're going to do, then they may take action, right? Kinetic action to stop it. They've done it in Iraq. They did it in Syria, gone after, you know, these, these capabilities. And that could obviously cause a flash there that spreads out of control, right, and draws us into it. So, you know, there's reasons why. Because people, you know, sometimes people say, why should why, why do I care about Taiwan? Why do I care about Iran? What do I, it's because of the potential for a problem that we can't get our hands around, that we can't control. And so with, with Iran, it you know, largely comes down to this issue of, you know, what is their breakout? Now, Aside from just enriching uranium, they got to come up with the weaponization of it all, right? And that could take longer, right? That could take months and months, right? But, you know, it's a heavy lift to figure out what their plans and intentions are. So, and, and you know, we kind of backed out of this Biden administration was clear that they wanted to get back into the nuke agreement from 2015. It was like, yeah, we got we to gotta do everything we can. And so they started those talks when they got in, and now they've kind of shut them down, basically, because the Iranians you know, made some demands that weren't realistic, and also, yeah, the protests, right? And also, they're selling fucking weapons to Russia, right? So, you know, Russia's turned to Iran and North Korea to resupply their hardware and, and, and get gear that they can't get, drones in particular from Iran. So do we really want to be talking, you know, a, nu- a nuke deal with Iran at this moment? You know, probably not, you know, whether it's pragmatic or not, but certainly from a political perspective, I don't think the Biden administration wants that heat. So there's a, there's a lot of shit happening that's very interesting. <laughs>